So we want to kind of get right into the gun bully segment that we've been working on for quite a while now. We have that Wyndham Weaponry AR-15 in this ice. It's down in here. We're going to bust this thing out of here as our next stage of our, I guess, our diary entry for the gun bully segment that we're doing. This thing's been, this is day three so far of this AR-15 frozen in ice. We actually submerged it in ice the first day, got it nice and covered up in there. The temperature actually melted it down a little bit that evening and then it froze back up down to about 27 degrees that night. Froze solid. Yesterday we busted it out, broke it out a little bit, covered it back up because it, it warmed up just a hair yesterday enough to where it would solidify around this thing again. Plus we wanted to get ice inside the weapon also, not just encasing the outside of it. So that was the purpose of trying to melt it back down again before we refroze it again. So today is day three. We're going to bust it out of here today, take it over to the firing range and fire it once it's safe. Of course, we don't want to have ice in the in the uh, gas system or in the chamber or anything like that. So we're gonna, we're gonna get the ice out of the weapon and drain it out of there before we shoot it. And we're gonna, when we do shoot it, we're gonna fire it really, really hot. We're gonna run about 100 rounds through it pretty quick to try to go from hot to cold pretty fast. This thing's made out of steel, so don't expect it to do a whole lot. Don't expect it to malfunction. However, just something we wanted to do to see what it does when it goes from extreme cold to extreme hot. Chad, we've got a number of things that we're planning on doing to this gun. What's some of the other things we've got in mind for it? We are going to take this gun, we're going to throw it in uh, a pond for a week or so, let it sit underwater, see how it handles that, sit in the water and the mud, uh, maybe throw it in some sand, cover it in dirt, leave it there for a while, let it get good and gritty, take it out, clean it up, fire it, uh, maybe let it sit in mud, underneath mud. Okay. we got good gumbo mud down in here in Louisiana, <laughs> so we'll right. find a good uh, muddy spot to stick this gun in and let it sit for a little while, see what we can do to it. Well, that sounds good. I guess what we'll do now is we're gonna go ahead and bust this thing out of here. We've got our trusty little pick and hammer that we're gonna get it out of here with. And uh, Chad and I are just gonna disassemble this ice, bring this thing over there. We don't wanna necessarily thaw the gun out, but we don't want any ice in the gas system or the chamber or anything like that. So we have to get it somewhat thawed to a certain degree to get the, the ice liquefied to get it out of there so we can fire the weapon. So we're gonna get started on that. We then took our time to get the block of ice out of the tub that had the AR in it. And then we went to town. Temperatures outside were still in the upper 20s, so it wasn't like we were dealing with a fast thaw here. We actually had to break the weapon out of the ice ourselves. As we got closer to the weapon, we had to slow down and be a little bit more careful about how we chipped away at the ice. We didn't want to damage the weapon itself. Now that we were this close, it was time to take a little bit more care to fine tune and get the ice off of the weapon. <laughs> Being made of steel and polymer, we weren't expecting any damage whatsoever to the finish of the gun. All right, Chad, we got it out. Um, not sure if you can see this. I'm going to try to get a close up here. See, it's got ice all in the barrel. Uh, it's frozen solid in there. Um, I doubt that this is going to do any good to try to. Yeah, it's fr it's frozen solid here. So yeah, I'm not even going to be able to look at the inside of the gun in the chamber. We're going to... Uh, look up in the magazine. Yeah. Got our ice all in the magazine well. So uh, we're going to try to get all the ice out of it. All those particular pieces of it. And then we'll uh, free this thing up, take it out to the range and shoot it. Uh, it didn't take but a second to thaw it out. We haven't done anything to it. We haven't even wiped off the uh, condensation or the sweat from the ice. Um, we definitely haven't oiled it. Remember, we haven't even cleaned this thing yet. Uh, we've shot, I think, 125 total rounds through it. Five originally we got it uh, just to get a, an idea of how accurate it was and where it was going to fall so we have something to compare it to. And then 120 rounds of steel case ammo. So we're going to go ahead and run another 120 rounds of steel case ammo through it today again without cleaning it and see how it shoots. The bolt stripped around with no problem and it was ready to go. We really let this rifle have it. Remember, it was just frozen solid and we just knocked all the ice off of it. 
We heated this thing up. There was absolutely no rest other than what it took to reload the magazines in between. So this rifle didn't have time to cool off and we ran these rounds through it fast. Once all the dust had settled, we took a peek inside the ejection port window. Now remember, we've never oiled or cleaned this thing, so that moisture you see inside here, that's actually from the melted ice that was in the cracks and crevices inside the weapon earlier. Other than a little carbon fouling, this thing didn't look all that bad inside. After three days frozen in a block of ice, this thing was good to go. The finish still looked just fine. There were tiny, tiny spots in remote areas where it looked like a little bit of rust wanted to take shape, but other than that, it was not in bad shape. Now to show that the rifle's consistency had not changed at this point, the first five rounds we ever shot out of this weapon, along with the second five rounds that we just shot after 240 steel case rounds, showed that the groupings were all very similar and consistent. Obviously pinpoint accuracy is not what we're going for here. We're trying to show if the rifle begins to show any signs of inconsistent shooting after all the things that we put the weapon through. Now thus far, the worst thing we've done to this weapon is not cleaning it and not lubricating it. We have not done either of those things since we purchased this Wyndham Weaponry MPC AR-15 to run our gun bully tests on. The heating up of the barrel immediately after thawing it out of a block of ice does not seem to have affected the weapon in any way either. Along with that moisture from that melted ice, the weapon fired perfectly. No misfeeds, no misfires. Another 120 rounds through it with absolutely no problem whatsoever. Next up on our gun bully segment, the dirty stuff. We're gonna submerge this weapon in the pond, leave it there for a week. We're gonna bury it in sand, leave it there for a while. We're gonna bury it in some mud. We're also going to quote unquote oil it with a mystery substance that a lot of people out there seem to think is good to lubricate a firearm with and it absolutely is not. Oh and we're still not cleaning it. I like to picture Jesus as a ninja fighting off evil samurai. <laughs>